Hello, everyone. Privileged to have Professor Manu Shankar Hari with us. He's a co-author of Surviving Sepsis Guidelines and Sepsis 3.0 Definition. His research focuses on adult critically ill patients with sepsis. In particular, epidemiology, recovery of immune function. Currently, he holds the chair of Translational Critical Care Medicine at the Institute of Regeneration and Repair, the University of Edinburgh. Manu's research goal is to enable precision immunomodulation in critically ill patients with sepsis and ARDS. We welcome you, sir. A privilege to have Professor Manu Shankar Hari. So I'll start with my first question. With introduction of sepsis 3.0, the QSOFA has replaced SIRS uh, criteria as a tool for risk stratification. But its clinical utility and accuracy has been the subject of debate, as QSOFA has not been thoroughly validated. Now, considering the ongoing controversy over the effectiveness of QSOFA compared to SIRS, what are the next steps in sepsis diagnosis? What are the tools or strategies that might be developed to enhance the accuracy in early detection of sepsis? Yeah, so uh, thanks again for hosting me. This is a, a great question. So we we did write about uh, QSOFA um, with a, an editorial in Annals of Internal Medicine site, QSOFA, Q Confusion, uh, because it, the points you raise exactly is the challenge. Even in the original manuscript, we make a specific point. Failure to meet a QSOFA of two or more should not lead to a deferral of investigation for infection or treatment because that a clinicians may feel that infection is a reason for patient being unwell. QSOFA was, um, if you look at the original manuscript, QSOFA timestamps are, if you take a blood sample for a suspected infection, what are the physiological abnormalities at that time that predict deterioration later? So that's what QSOFA did. QSOFA was not there to say, it has to replace SIRS. QSOFA was a tool to say, if you have these abnormalities, it is likely that you will deteriorate. You've got a greater likelihood of deterioration if you had two or more elements of QSOFA. And unlike SIRS, it, it does not need any blood test. For example, SIRS needs white blood cell count, whereas QSOFA does not need that. It just is confusion, which is, which is GCS score, respiratory rate uh, of 22 breaths per minute or more, and a altered mental state of GCS and the blood pressure. So those are the three variables in the QSOFA score. And when you, to come to your question, which is what are the things in diagnostic, when you think about a test or a tool for a patient's illness, as a clinician at least, uh, me as a clinician looks for a few things really. Is the test going to tell me uh, something about screening? Screening is where you want to determine a preclinical disease, as in before they become sepsis, you want to figure out whether they are likely to develop sepsis. That's your screening tool. And I think QSOFA and SIRS both have got uh, values for that elements of screening. But what QSOFA is derived from symptomatic patients. Remember when I said somebody, a clinician or a healthcare professional, felt that this person has got an infection as the likely reason for their acute illness. So. The starting point of QSOFA is already symptomatic disease. Therefore, you're not really using it as a screening tool. The second thing you want is, I want to diagnose sepsis. If that's your question, the diagnosis of sepsis requires organ dysfunction. And QSOFA, an altered GCS, gives you neurological dysfunction. A low blood pressure gives you cardiovascular dysfunction. So in a way, in terms of sepsis diagnostic, you are closer to the eventual diagnosis of sepsis if you believe that infection is the reason why they are acutely unwell. So that's a kind of the diagnostic element. And you can contrast that diagnostic element with kind of SIRS and you can see why QSOFA pe performs better for that particular question. The third question you want is, is this person likely to get a severe disease? Now, the severe disease uh, for clinicians is is this person going to require organ dysfunction, ICU stay, or have a greater risk of dying than somebody who does not have a positive test? And I think QSOFA performs there because what you're saying is if you have QSOFA, you've got a greater risk of staying in hospital, greater risk of needing critical care, greater risk of organ dysfunction. So in a way, the severity scoring element is useful. The, then the other reason why you would use a test is 
is this the clinical decision rule? So what you're doing there is going to the end of the bed and then you as a clinician feel that this person has got a suspected disease that looks like sepsis or looks like an infection. And there you want to answer the question, should I just treat with antibiotics and leave them where they are? Or should I treat with antibiotics and take them to a setting where their deterioration can be managed? And I think there are different elements of that one question, which is what is this patient's illness brings in, which is the, the things that I said are screening, diagnosis, severity scoring and clinical decision. These are things that we as doctors look for. Then the last thing you probably will need to think about is prognosis, right? I mean, and response to a treatment that you're giving. Uh, the cues of a kind of was not actually uh, performed, uh, derived for any response to treatment prediction, neither is SERS. But what QSOFA does give you is prognostic value. If you got a two or more variables of QSOFA, you got a worse prognosis than somebody who does not have that value. So I think it's a total confusion as to what QSOFA is and should be used for. And I think part of the reason why this happens is that people conflate QSOFA as a replacement for SERS and QSOFA as an early warning score. And often the other argument that you hear is, hey, new score is better than QSOFA because, and actually it's a simple uh, basic epidemiology, right? If you have a scoring system that has got five variables compared to scoring system that's got three variables, the five variable scoring system will perform better. I mean, that's just basic math. So it's totally um, confusing as to why uh, people think QSOFA can do more than what it's originally intended to do. In very simple terms, QSOFA was there because you wanted a, a quick, end of bed end of bedogram uh, to say if you are suspecting an infection as the reason for their acute illness and they have two or more variables of QSOFA they are likely to have a greater risk of adverse outcome and that adverse outcome is hospital length of stay IC length of stay or mortality does that answer your question that you asked yes definitely okay, cool okay